we develop plants that are able to tolerate drought and resist disease? How do we maintain and increase the yields of crops in order to feed our growing population? How do we find the solutions to some of these problems? Well, one of the solutions lies in a practice known as plant breeding. Plant breeding is a practice that has been around for thousands of years since the beginning of our agricultural ancestors. And who are the individuals that help us with plant breeding? Well, that would be plant breeders. A plant breeder is an individual who changes the genetic traits of plants in order to produce desired characteristics. These changes are meant to solve problems which are found in agriculture. Overall, the working condition of someone in this position would generally change depending on where they are within the company. They will generally divide their time between the laboratories, the out in the fields, and it might vary but other things such as the greenhouse. Again, it all depends on their position. But no matter what, rain or shine, they will do whatever they need for their science. They will go out, collect, and analyze different samples such as soil, water, plants, anything that would relate to how a plant is growing. And by doing so, they can take the samples, bring them back to the lab, and analyze them. This job is perfect for anyone who's looking to get their hands dirty, but they also want to have some strategic problem solving as well. Let's go back to some of the questions that I addressed earlier in the video, and how are they actually producing the solutions to these problems? Well, plant breeders usually use two different types of techniques when they're creating new plants. The first one being the more traditional method, something you're a little more familiar with. What a plant breeder will do is, well, let's take, for example, corn. If corn had a particular disease, what a plant breeder would do was they would take corn of another variety and something that is able to tolerate this disease and they would pollinate it with the old corn that has the disease. So now when there's new pollination that gets created, there is now a new hybrid of corn, one that can tolerate disease. The second option would be for a plant breeder is to use cutting edge technology. What they would do, which is where genetics would come in, is they would take the DNA of another species and it doesn't necessarily have to be corn and they'll take the DNA right out of that corn and they'll insert it into the one that has the disease. And then in doing so, they create a new hybrid or a genetically modified organism and they create a new hybrid of corn which is able to tolerate that disease. Pretty cool, right? A day in the life of a plant breeder will vary depending on what type of year it is. Summertime is the prime time for growing seasons for a lot of different produce. So what they'll do is you'll find them out in the fields a lot, collecting samples for analysis, which they can bring back later in times that are a little off peak season, such as the fall and the winter time. During these periods, they'll be in the laboratory analyzing the results that they achieved in the summer. And then, using that, they can analyze, detect, and see where it all fits in with their hypothesis. And therefore, they can tweak it and tweak it to get ready for spring, the next season. And this process will continue until they solve the problem that was at hand. Though this is just a snapshot of some of the responsibilities that a plant breeder will have, a lot of it will depend on what your speciality is and what type of produce that you've decided to specialize in. Overall, some of the most important characteristics that you're going to have to have, or at least skills, are you're going to need technical skills, analytical skills, the ability to write scientific reports, have good communication skills, I mean, if you have a breakthrough discovery, you're going to have to be talking to other farmers and other scientists, and not only that, you're going to have to keep up with scientific literature. I mean, it's always important that you know what's going on in the field, and just to have that competitive edge, that might just help you with your research as well. Other jobs in the food and agricultural industry, there's not just one option in order to get this position. No, there's a lot of different options available. However, some of the first steps which would probably be beneficial to you is obtaining a bachelor's degree in science. Ideally, you would want something in agriculture or plant breeding, however, something such as biology or chemistry would also be beneficial. Some courses which would be ideal to take during your university years would be things pertaining to biology, chemistry, plant genetics, genetics, biochemistry, soils, anything that might relate to how to work outside in agriculture or in plant breeding. For example, a great university that you might want to check up here right in Canada would be the University of Guelph and they have a bachelor's degree in agriculture, so make sure to check that one out. An undergraduate degree would open doors for individuals who are looking to move towards technician jobs in the industry and with universities. 
moving forward, if you're looking to have further education, such as a master's degree, this would help you move up in the company and have a more senior level position, such as a station manager or an assistant breeder. If you want to even go further than that, a PhD is the best option if you want to have a little more independence with your own research. Plants do not grow in a day, and sometimes they can take months and even years for different projects to be completed, and that's a long time. Remember, plant breeders are indispensable individuals who help make sure that our world is being fed, and now is one of the best times than ever to get into this field. And remember, at the end of the day, they just love plants. Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching this video. If any of the things in this video sounded interested to you, make sure to check out the National Association of Plant Breeders and the National Alliance of Independent Crop Consultants, which I will have a link for you. And don't forget to check out the Food Grads website, your connection to the food and beverage industry. And that's everything for this video, so see you next time.